Hi guys. So today we are going to learn about bean validation. So maybe most of the people have heard about this bean validation and those who are really don't know about this bean validation, we are going to learn this. So be with me. So welcome to my YouTube channel Teki Kumar and today we will uh, learn about this bean validation in detail. This lecture is going to be a little lengthy. So please bear with me and trust me at the end of this lecture you will able to understand like why we need to have this bean validation in place during you know uh, writing rest apis okay and why it is far better than traditional approaches okay so without wasting our time let's move to bean validation so here we have two terms bean and validation so I, I believe like most of the people know about what is bean but even if somebody doesn't know so let me give you a brief idea about the bean so bean is nothing just a, a plain java object class which we call it like pojo okay pojo class and this class will have nothing just it will have the fields and getters and setters for example let me write here see if i write class and here I write a user this is the class name and this class name will have like you know private string name and for this we will have uh, getters we will have getters getter and for we will have setter as well okay so this is a pojo class that we we call it as a bean now now what is validation here okay so whenever we create an instance of this class and we want to use it in our application so for example i have written like here some some code which is going to tell me whether this is a valid uh, you know name or not so based on our application requirement uh, the name of the user should be of minimum of three characters so let's say that validation is there so i am checking that some condition is there name dot length name dot length name dot length is greater than or equal to 3 so if this is the case then only we are going to proceed with further processing so this is a kind of validation this is nothing but a kind of validation okay this is called validation so we are validating the field you know what would be the correct uh, uh, field value as per the business logic so this is just an example for name so maybe we have some a uh, field called password for a user so that password might have like you know a limitation of it should be at least of eight characters containing uh, you know one digit one one um, you know uh, a special character so such kind of requirement would be there and if you are just going to implement that validation in terms of this if and else so that is that is actually a validation in terms of bean validation right so that is about the bean validation so this is bean and this is the validation moving ahead now we need to understand why we need to have this bean validation in place whenever we are writing a rest apis so let's see that <coughs> As I said, right, I took an example of uh, password. So here, let's say we have a, um, a business logic where we are saying that the, pass the password should be of, password should be greater than or equal to eight, char eight characters and it must have one uh, number one special character care okay. 
so there must be you know there are three requirements so now there are two ways to implement it so whenever you get this data to your uh, you know backend uh, api then how you are going to process that so what i'm trying to say here when a user is going to fill a form for example login form or maybe uh, sign up form sign up form there the user has provided email then password and this is confirm password confirm password okay so there are three fields on this form and user has entered this value and clicked on clicked on sign up button or maybe uh, you know you, we can say like uh, uh, sign up here sign up so we don't need we don't need this here let me remove this okay good fine so user user is filling a form and user has clicked on sign up now this data this data comes as json and reaches to your api so you have created an api saying that this is you can say like registration registration or maybe you can call it as sign up so this is the registration api and this api will have body so we are expecting this is a post call post http method and it is expecting a body and in that body we are getting email password and confirm password so for that we have created a a pojo class like this user where you uh, you know we can here we can create a pojo class like saying that class and here we can say like you know registration okay sorry for my bad writing and here we have different fields like email then we have a uh, password and then confirm password pwd okay so there are three fields email password and confirm password and we have corresponding getters and setters this is getters getters and setters so whenever we make this call this value will be mapped to email password and confirm so as i said like there are two ways to put validation the first validation can be we put at the ui layer ui layer where ui guys can take this care of in the you know at the form level when they are writing the code where they can put the validation for password email and confirm password about this business logic but as a back end developer we we cannot rely on the ui validation we should always rely on data and validation should be always done at the service layer we should never never uh, you know uh, believe that okay whatever the data we will get that will be a valid from the uh, from ui end no we should not uh, think in that way so maybe 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 some due to some reason whatever be the possibility or maybe someone is directly hitting your url uh, through client or something so in that case your api will break if you have not put validation for this so now if we talk about the service layer so let's say this is the service layer service layer we will see these these things in code i'm just you know uh, trying to draw a picture about like what we are going to uh, you know take care in the code okay so just try to visualize these things as of now so we have a service layer in the back end and in that service layer we have written a logic like we have verified if the email is valid email id or not if email dot is valid some kind of validation we have applied 
maybe some business logic we have written a method of is valid where we are validating whether the email has at rate symbol or not or uh, uh, dots are there proper email ids or not then we have you know this is one validation right then we have also validated uh, a password password dot is valid okay so i mean we have a number of if else if conditions which is going to validate each field of your pozo class the first will validate the email and then password and then confirm password so based on this you know if it if they are valid then you will proceed with your registration process and if some if any one of that uh, you know field is not valid then you are going to throw an exception okay so like here while while processing the registration you are validating the request object this is called request object so we are going to validate the request object so till here it's cool we can validate it using if condition we can validate each and every field using if logic but just think for a larger picture what if your pojo class will have 50 fields maybe maybe have 150 who knows right maybe there could be a requirement where we, we will have a very very uh, you know uh, very big pojo class where we will have number of fields and there would be lots of validations involved in each field so in that case it would be very very difficult for our developer to maintain this validation and if if a developer miss any validation then it will break your code so it is always suggested to not go with this traditional approach if you are using a spring boot if you are using a spring boot to write rest apis so there is there is annotation that will help you to uh, take care of these validations okay so i will show you like what are the dependencies required to uh, do this development we will go through the code as well but as of now i hope it's clear for you guys that why we are doing the validation why is it really important and this one what we discussed this is a traditional approach this is the traditional like you know for one or two field we can go with that for that it's okay but for more than that it's not okay we cannot go with that okay so that's why we are here to learn something new about bean validation so hope we are good so we talked about bean bean validation we also talked about the traditional approach that we follow to validate a bean now let's move ahead then what is the you know prop correct approach okay so what's the correct approach so correct approach would be we have one annotation provided by spring spring board actually it's a part of a spring board where we use one annotation to validate the request body so whenever we write an uh, uh, a controller endpoint right so there we use so let me just give an example here let's say i'm uh, just consuming that here returning response response entity and here we are going to return a registered user and then we have we can say like register user and you know right whenever we have a post method let's say consider this is this annotation is like post mapping post mapping and now here you will use one annotation that you may already know right that is request request body and then after you use your user user so whatever sorry whatever object we receive from the ui that will be mapped to this pozo class using this annotation request body so your body will be mapped to this java class there is one annotation what we are going to show you means we are going to discuss that annotation name is at the rate 
valid okay so this annotation is at the rate valid this annotation will take care of the validation part you don't need to do if and else kind of thing for each uh, for each field in your pojo class you just need to specify what you want to check for example if we have a like uh, let's say age so we can say like like you know for my business for my business application the age should have some minimum value or max value so we can put like you know mean might be 18 or 15 or max would be uh, maybe 100 max so in that case any user whose age is more than more or less than that would not be able to register themselves on my website so i just need to provide the values higher values and the minimum values rest of the thing it will be taken care by this annotation now then how it works like whenever your your validation failed it always throws a error okay actually it throws an exception and thus that exception will have the detailed information about the field which has not passed during validation for example i i talked about age so if age is age has entered as 10 so you will get an error age must be between 18 to 100 so in that way like you know whoever is calling that api they can show a proper response on the website or whoever is calling the web uh, you know api they will come to know like why the app why the user is not able to register themselves on the website the reason behind is the data provided by the user is not valid as per the bin validation whatever the business logic we have implemented so that's the reason we must have to implement it in a proper way okay so i'll come to that i'll come to that point i will also take you through the code as well okay so as of now what i wanted to highlight here that is add rate valid annotation okay so we are good here now let's move so this valid annotation works and now, now we have to see like how we can implement this in the code so let's get into the code and i'll give you a walkthrough what are the dependencies i have used and you know uh, you know how i have implemented so to so just save time i have already created a project a running project where i will uh, show you the code dependencies uh, and how i have handled and how we can handle the handle the you know the errors or exceptions will, which will be thrown as a part of the bean validation that everything we will see here in this code walkthrough okay so uh, i believe you guys are okay till here and now let's proceed to the code walkthrough so here is my eclipse i'm inside the project there are lots of project i have created but this is the project regarding bean validation and please don't worry about this code this is already available in github i will share the link in the comment section okay so now let's move so what i should show you first so this is the maven best spring boot application so let's let me show you the form.xml file what is what are the dependencies i have added so far so okay so i hope it's visible right so you can see i have used one uh, spring boot starter validation a starter web dev tools just for restarting the application h2 for in memory database model mapper to map two objects specifically from dto to you know uh, user entities the entity objects and then we have test this is the default and data jpa and i have used lomba just to uh, you know uh, cut down the baller pet codes okay now so why we are using a spring boot starter validation so let's get into that so actually spring boot starter validation dependency includes few dependencies for example hibernate validator which is which will be responsible for validating your entity validating your object your bean right so this is the actual dependency what we need 
so instead of uh, you know adding those dependencies uh, independently what we are using we are using spring boot starter validator dependency so by that means since we since when we started using uh, spring boot right so we are always trying to use the starter dependencies which will take care of all your transitive dependencies uh, uh, under the hood right so let's go here <clears throat> so now let's close let me close this so we we saw right what is the dependency here what we have added it's very few dependencies i have added here so the one what we need to consider or notice here is spring boot starter validation so this is the first requirement okay to add the dependency what's next so let me go next so here if i go through this i have created different packages so i'll try to start it from the controller what we discussed about at that valid annotation and then we'll see like how it is implemented so this is the controller package i have created one controller user controller it starts with slash user mapping and here i have created slash create so this user uh, you know controller is responsible for creating user and getting the user details based on the ids or getting all the user details so there are like you know we have some post mapping as well where user want to update their phone number okay and we have also put mapping so now <clears throat> let me show you the first uh, endpoint so this is the post mapping where we have slash create this is the endpoint and this is the annotation what we were talking so i have used add rate valid annotation so if you see like from where it comes so add rate valid annotations let me show you from where it comes okay if you put cursor here you can easily find out right java x dot validation dot valid okay so this is the annotation java x dot validation dot valid here it comes right on the top itself okay request body you already know like this is for just mapping your uh, you know object incoming object to this java class or java bin okay now because i have used this added valid annotation so how it is going to work let me open this user request so this is the uh, you know pojo class where we have three fields name age email and phone number so as, as i was talking right we just need to provide the validation logic i mean the mean and the values data for example i want to restrict my application for users is between 18 to 60 so i have used at mean value is 18 and i have also added a error message if this validation fails due to this condition the error message should be this okay and based on 60 it error message should be age should be less than or equal to 60 now a name should not be null and email i have used this annotation at the rate email it should not be not null means email cannot be null and email should have this you know uh, validation so whenever we are using at the rate email validation it will internally take care of the email validation okay so we don't need to provide that uh, to write that logic to validate the email now here i have also used a pattern at the rate pattern so to just use regular expressions to validate something so i wanted to validate uh, mobile numbers and that should be digit and that length should be not more than 10 so that logic i have written here it starts with d means digits maximum count should be 10 and that after it means nothing should be between these numbers so maximum 10 digits allowed so if you if you try to insert or uh, uh, provide a mobile number having 11 digits then you will get this error okay now this is done so how it is going to handle the exceptions so let me show you that let me go to the, this part so we discussed about controller we discussed about uh, you know here we have exception as well let me go here okay dto dao okay good fine so if we go here we have 
we have like example dot validation dot exception so what we have we have written a you know custom exceptions where whatever the error we exception we will receive that exception will be passed to the the you know the outer upper exception and that will be thrown to user so let me show you so now i have done some more thing here we have like global exception advice so i mean i can take a separate session to just uh, discuss about how we need to means how we should handle the you know exception in spring boot application so we'll see that so as of now like you can understand this is a central exception so whatever exception happens in your within your application that will go through this this exception this advice class okay so that's why we are using at the rest controller advice and here we are using uh, annotations with bad request so let me correct you here uh, means let me uh, tell you one thing here bad request so whenever validation the request bean validation happens and that any or one of the field is not valid in that case spring boot will throw a bad request error with method argument not valid exception so you can see that I'm trying to catch that specific ex exception and then after what I, I am um, I have done here because I know that this exception will come and I'm trying to get that result whatever the error we have uh, you know customized for that particular field validation that we are trying to fetch it from here get binding result and we are just also getting the errors and here we are using a stream and we are iterating through all the uh, field errors and we are trying to put inside this map okay and then we will return that as a error map and that will be returned as a response to user in case of bean validation failure okay and this is this is just a you know a small spring boot uh, you know rest api application so nothing nothing more uh, you know uh, uh, complex here apart from this uh, you know bin validation you can see that i have a user service layer i have created a logic to uh, to save a user you can see that i have user dao i'm trying to using this for save user okay so that is what i'm i'm doing here good so let's move ahead good now let me run this application I'm running in debug mode. Maybe we need to debug this application. So we'll see that. So let's go to controller here. We will try to create a user. So let me um, uh, let me open this insomnia I have here. Okay. Application is started. Let me go to console. Application is started on 8080 port and this is the user and slash create okay so user i have already used this annotation multiple times so you can you can just user and here you can see like user create and this is a post mapping and we need to pass the user request so let me let me see this what kind of request name age email and phone so are we going to pass name no so we need to pass here name age email and phone okay so we have name age email and phone so this is the now let's john and then oh sorry we need to pass the age right we need to pass let's say let me put a valid valid data right so let me put like uh, 32 then email is email we need to pass right test at email.com and then we are going to pass a number mobile number so we can say like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so these are the 10, 10 digits so first time i'm going to show you the positive happy path so let me hit this it's saying that user could not connect to server because 
our application is running on 8080 80 port not 81 so make it 80 then hit it okay so let me disable this debug point because we don't want to debug this application so now user is created and we got an id we didn't pass the id right but we we got this so this is the happy flow now let's let's break this flow i mean i'm going to provide invalid data to just see like whether this validation is working in place or not so let, let's see like what are the validation we have applied so let, let me go to user request so validation is saying that age should not be less than 18 so let me put an uh, age of less than 18 so i'll put an age of 10 okay and let me just hit this so see we are getting a proper error message like age should be greater than 18 so let me correct this error if I put 19 so no error right now let me break this email ID validation whether it's working or not must be a well formed email address cool so this is like very informative by looking at the error you can easily identify okay something went wrong with email field and I need to provide a valid 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 data and here on the top you will get getting 400 bad requests it means that whenever you are building a request whenever you are passing a data to that request object that is not correct it's very clear let me break this uh, phone email ID. let me correct this email id validation and then I'll this time I'll try to enter 11 digits in phone number let me see what it's happening and let me break uh, multiple field validation like age I'm going to make it 9 and uh, email and phone so this time I have provided three invalid field data age email and phone let's see how it is working so you can see right it's it's saying that okay hello your your request object is we have received but while processing your request object we are saying that phone email and is is not valid as per a business logic and we have provided the details so that way like you know this will help you to identify what's wrong with your your request body simply returning a bad request will not help the you know ui guys to understand what's wrong with that so that you, they can show to that uh, you know user so we should always provide a proper error message while writing the validation okay so see how it is working and i think it's very cool here right it's not that much difficult so whatever the message we have provided we are seeing that as a response and the error is 400 so guys this is all about the validation and i believe you have better understanding now like why we are using this bean validation okay and uh, uh, it's really very very important when you are writing a rest apis so please take care of this validation always use either a valid annotation to validate your request body uh, before processing before it starts processing at the service layer it doesn't make any sense to proceed with uh, incorrect data it's better to just validate your request object itself whenever you received it if everything looks good then only you go for the further processing at the service layer okay so i think uh, this brings us to the uh, you know last end session of this lecture and i'm really happy to share this uh, data with you guys so please let me know if you have any questions you can put a comment i'll try to answer them and thank you very much for watching my video if you really like it please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and share thank you very much once again